Jesus. So my, 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 my message to you today is this. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? And I say that, why? Because you think about, you know, we, we, we expound, we, we talk about, we, we always talking about how great God is and God is an awesome God and man, I don't know what I'd do without him. And, and it's almost like God put your life on hold. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? I mean, people are coming on the planet, people are leaving the planet. But we find ourselves, and I'm talking about many in the body of Christ, are still waiting, waiting, waiting for that something to happen that might not never happen. We need to be busy about our fathers. I mean, at 12 years old, Jesus, my God, he told his mom and his dad, and, and, and I'm talking about Joseph, he said, I'm about my father's business. They couldn't find him. They were looking for him for three, three, three days. They, they couldn't find him. And, 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 and how could you lose a son? Lord Jesus. But anyway, they, you know, when they, when they did come up on him, they found him mesmerizing the priests and the, and the scribes in the temple. And, and he was telling them, well, I'm about my father's business. 12 years old. I don't know. I'm not even going to ask you how old you are. But are you about your father's business? Or are you still in the business of doing you? Are you still in the business of trying to, 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 to make yourself bigger than what you, you know, <laughs> than what you are? Because we know how to puff ourselves up. I'm here to tell you now. I'm not here to expound, or I'm not here to, to let's just say, to, to, to get you to, to, to look at me. It's not about me, the messenger. It's about the message. Are you hearing me? I'm the, ooh, Lord, it's about the message of salvation, the message of love, the message of joy, the message of peace. So the question today is, what are you waiting for? You know, your future is calling you and you still waiting. You still sitting down, still waiting, still waiting for Mr. Goodbar, waiting for the money, waiting for the job, waiting for the, you know, waiting for that, waiting for the lottery ticket. Oh, if I can just hit that lottery ticket. Then I be what are, what are you waiting for? Really, what are you waiting for? Waiting for what? Saints, we have to start getting busy. And I believe all of us really need to take a real honest look. And I'm not just talking about at ourselves because you can stand in front of any mirror and you can see yourself. But it's what's going on on the inside that you need to address those issues that are going on on the inside those issues that cause you to sit down, those issues that cause you to stop, those issues that cause you to doubt, those issues that cause you to not see yourself as good enough. I'm here to tell you, I tell you every morning, you are amazing. You are amazing. That And if you are amazing, that means you're able to do some amazing things in the kingdom, some amazing things in the body of Christ. See, but look here, motivation will be short-lived if you're lacking discipline. Motivation, and, and you know, and I'm not here to motivate you. Uh, well, as much as I would love to motivate you, I'm here to really expound upon this man named Jesus. Because when you get him in your heart, oh man, when you get him in your heart, because the Bible does say, hide the word of God in your heart so you don't sin against God. So we got to be able to hide Jesus. We got to be able to get him up in there and we got to allow that word of God to do a work in us, a work that will cause us to keep moving forward and not moving back or not standing still. Let me, let me, let me share something with you because the root word for discipline is disciple. Listen, listen to me now. The root word for discipline is disciple which comes from the Latin word disciplus, disciplus, D-I-S-C-I-P-U-L-U-S, meaning student. A, dis, a discipline comes from the Latin word disciple. It really means, the root word means disciple, meaning that what? We are called to be students, students of this word of God. And most people believe that the disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ, but in reality, it means student, as in one who studies. You have to get like the Bereans, my sister. 
my brother. Study to show yourself approval, workmen not ashamed, rightly dividing that word. A matter of fact, approve unto God. You know, we might want to show our, uh, show, show what we've learned, what we've heard, what we received. We might want to prove ourselves in reference to what we know about the word of God, but how much of the word of God are we living? Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed. I'm not ashamed of this gospel. Thank you, Jesus. Because I recognize and realize it was this gospel that brought me to a place where I can be happy with myself, about myself. I can be happy with life. I, I, I recognize and realize that my God, every day without Jesus is like a day without sunshine. Because truly, he is the joy of my life. He's the light of my life. Are you hearing me? We need to have that relationship with the one who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what we can ask or think, you know, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly dividing the word of truth to succeed in having self-discipline. Let me give you some elements. Let me give you some keys to, let's just say, succeeding in having self-discipline. And that's where many of us fall short because we're not, let's just say, uh, demonstrating those qualities that can, let's just say, that can prop us up and, and keep us in, in a place or position us to where we're able to continue to stand up under these different trials and tests and these different things that is coming to try us. First of all, you must have these four key elements in order for self-discipline to develop and then after developing for it to flourish. I want that, oh Lord, I want to flourish. You should want to flourish. You should want to become the best version of yourself. That first thing is self-control. Lord, gee, temperance, self-control. You should want to be, you, hey, the Bible says he was unable to guard his own spirit. It's like a city that is torn down or broken down without walls. Meaning anybody can come in and pilfer. I'm not just talking about the devil. Well, the devil will use people. But we understand, you understand what I'm saying. You want to be able to guard your spirit. You want to be able to be in, you want to be able to control self. In other words, you don't want to fly off the handle because somebody said something or looked at you in a strange way or didn't do what you might want them to do. And then that second thing is motivation. You have to be able to motivate yourself. See, you looking for pastor, you looking for sister girl, brother girl, you looking for a friend. Hey, I'm here to, you got to be able to self-motivate yourself. You got to be able to motivate yourself. You got to be able to apply that word of God. I am greater is he that is in me than that devil that is after me. I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things through Christ. I mean, there's some key words in scripture that can help motivate you, my sister, that can help motivate you, my brother. You got to be able, ooh, Lord, I'm getting ahead of myself. You have to be able to apply this word of God. Only the truth will set a man, set a woman free. And then you have to be, that third key is this. You have to be persistent. Lord Jesus. Persistent. See, one thing about the devil, you can talk about the devil all you want, but the devil is persistent. And when he realized he can't gain ground doing one thing because you didn't get hip to it, he'll sit back, he'll watch you, he'll, he'll see how you're moving, he's going to look at the things that you like and the things that you don't like, the people that you like, and the people that he can use to, let's just say, break a good man, break a good woman down. Because we will open ourselves up to people. Why? Because, you know, well, I, I, I want to be validated. I want to be loved. I want to be liked. And he will use those people that, you know, you, you want to be loved, liked by, or considered value of some value to. And he will use those people. Why? Because they're not at that place where you are. They might act like it. They might pretend like it. But the real deal is that devil got a handle on him. And he'll use them to break a good man, good woman down. So you want to be persistent. You want to be persistent, my sister. You want to be persistent, my brother, when it comes to reading that word of God. You want to be persistent when it comes to, let's just say, to, to prayer, developing a prayer life. You want to be persistent when it comes to, you know, your, 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 your church involvement, so on and so forth. This is not a game. I'm here to tell you now. And all games have rules. See, 
And I want you to know only God's rules are going to work for you if you want to be able to gain entrance in, into the kingdom and to be able to be happy in Jesus. And I'm not going to say you're not going to deal with some strife and deal with some stuff once you're in the kingdom. Matter of fact, for some reason, it's going to turn up because you're going to be, see, when you was out there in the world, you know, you was going through stuff, but, you know, you didn't really understand what was going on. But now that you didn't come to Jesus, man. Woo, Lord Jesus, I didn't know I was going to have to deal with all of this. Well, believe it or not, you were dealing with all that before, but you didn't have the head knowledge or the heart knowledge that you have now today. And today, now and I can see a little bit clearer now. I understand some things. The Bible says, God says, he will not have you ignorant. You ought to be glad you're not where you used to be. You're not yet where you want to be, but thank God I'm not the man, the woman that I used to be. And then let me give you that fourth key. That fourth key is gold. Saints, all of us should, should be striving after something that's something that will, that will, let's just say, will establish us. And we want to we wanna be able to produce. We want to be able to achieve. We want to be able to uh, conduct ourselves in a way where, you know, we're able to accomplish these things that we start out to do. Some of us have put the gold down. Some of us have laid down a dream. Um, some of us are, are, not, are, not, are not seeking after the things that would be greater. Some of us are, are, are allowing ourselves just to sit idly by waiting for Mr. Goodbar. Oh, I'm here to tell you, waiting for a sugar daddy? Well, look here, money is tight today. I'm telling you, boy, folk is uptight, folk are divided, folk are going through. Folk is, mm, folk is, mm, I mean, folk are trying to, find, trying to make a way for themselves, much, much less trying to carry you. I mean, Lord Jesus. So we really have to understand, we have to deal with these four elements, these four keys, self-control, motivation, persistence, and then goals. See, and then let me, let me add this now. If you're not talking to God and you're not reading that word, you will never know and clearly see the promises that God has made for you. Are you hearing me? See, God, God hey, God, God is a God. He's a promise keeper. And I'm here to tell you now, these promises that God has put in place for you, I'm talking to you right now, those promises that God has put in place for you, he put a yea and an amen on it. In other words, those things that he has put in place for you, it's for you to have. Thank you, Jesus. Now, everybody that's in your life now, maybe you don't want everybody that's in your life to share in the blessing that he wants for you. And we need to be able to discern the will of God for our lives. We have to be able to discern the will of God for our lives. I want to clearly see the promises of God, the promises that God has made and have made available to me, that he has made available to you. And this is why we have to be able to spend that time with God. Not just, let's just say, in the word, but also in prayer. That's why we have to talk to him. We have to, hey, he's the... Hey, look here, he's the manufacturer. He's the one that created everything. Now, I like to say he stood out on nothing at the corner of no place and he made the world twirl. He put the sun, the moon, the stars in the sky. He cracked the valley between the mountain. He put the bird in the air, the fish in the sea. He put the cattle on the land. And guess what? He thought enough of you and me to put us here in this life right now. And he didn't put you, he didn't bring you here or send you here. He, hey, look here, you were created for a reason. You have purpose and you are able to make a difference difference. You're that one that is able to make a difference. I'm thanking God for Jesus because I recognize and realize that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, See, I'm talking about the ancient of days. Uh, I'm talking about the lily of the valley. Uh, I'm talking about the one who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what I can act or think uh, according to the power that would be in, 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 in him, the power that would be in him, not in you, because you don't have that, you don't have that staying power. See, all of us have to be able to come to the uh, to the power plant. I'm talking, you know, our, our lives, our, our, our homes are being lit up by uh, PSE and G or whoever your energy provider is. See, and, and, and I want you to know God is our energy provider. He's the one that gives us the strength. He's the one that lights up our lives. 
And I'm thanking God because he's the joy of my life. And I recognize and realize that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I'm talking about the ancient of days. Uh, I'm talking about the one who's well able and the one who has not forgotten, uh, have not forgot about you. Now, I know you might feel like you're going through some stuff all by yourself. I don't know why nobody knows. I don't know why nobody cares. I don't know why nobody, nobody's here to help me. Well, I'm here to tell you, you've already got someone on board. Uh, if you are a believer, my God, my God, you have Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in your life. You've got to be able to believe it in order to receive it. I come this far by faith, leaning, oh my God, leaning. Leaning on that word of God and leaning, my God, being guided by the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. You know, you know, you know, the Israelites, man. I mean, God did so much for the Israelites. I mean, brought them out of Egypt. I mean, I mean, he made sure they ate every day. Gave him a double portion on the sixth day. I mean, man, I mean, their clothes didn't wear out. I mean, he gave them water from a rock. I mean, God really provided for them. I mean, he put, he gave them a cloud by day so that the heat wouldn't, so that the sun wouldn't scorch them and mess them up and get, kept them kind of cool going through the, going through the, uh, the desert during the day. And then at night, he gave them a, a, a cloud of fire by night. And I mean, he lit up the sky so they can see where they were going. But he also uh, planted himself between uh, a Pharaoh and his army and the Israelites so they couldn't see. So, I mean, I'm talking about a God that is able to protect. Now, he's the same God, according to scripture now, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did for the Israelites, I want you to know, he's able to do for you. Now, I said all of that because the real deal is God brought them to the mouth of the promised land, and they couldn't go, they wouldn't go in. What were they waiting for? Let, let me go, look. Numbers chapter 14, verse 8. Numbers chapter 14, verse 8. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Oh, my God. And I mean, you can eat them like bread. Lord, you want to put a little jam on that bread? You want to put a little peanut butter and jelly? I, I, you know, I, hey, look here. I mean, back in the day, I mean, I used to have mayonnaise sandwiches because stuff was kind of slim in the cupboard. I mean, we were kind of going through coming up, but but we made it on peanut butter and we made it on 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 on, on that. Ooh, Lord, that 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 cheese and somebody somebody know what I'm talking about. Uh, you, you know, back in the day, uh, so I, had, I I know about the sugar sandwiches and whatnot because we had plenty of sugar, but we didn't have a whole lot of meat in the cabinet or in the refrigerator or or, or, or or cans of stuff in the cell, you know, on the shelves and whatnot. So we had to, we had to make it with what we had. And, and I'm thanking God because what mama was able to do, thank you, Jesus. It brought me to a place where I was able to, let's just say, to see the value, the value of making good choices and decisions. And I recognize and realize a life without Jesus is no life at all. Do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them and the Lord is with us. The Lord is with you, my sister. The Lord is with you, my brother. Now I know it might not look like it because if he was with me, why am I still sick in my body? If he's with me, why is my money still funny? If he's with me, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge God. The Bible says there in that in that in that in part of that eighth of that ninth verse says, "Do not fear them, my brother, my sister. I don't know what you're dealing with, and I'm not going to pretend that it's not that bad because for some of you that stuff is is an issue that don't seem like it's going away. But I'm here to tell you this morning, God wants you to know, fear not, my God, my God. Do not fear." what the enemy want to put in place or have put in place to hinder, to stop, or to discourage you. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. See, Israel, the Israelites was at the edge of the promised land. 
and they refused to enter into the land God promised to bless them with. They refused. Man, oh man, oh man. How could we make a decision not to do what God is telling us to do? Especially when he's cleared the path. Especially when they've gone through a wilderness. I mean, from Egypt to get to the edge of the promised land and then say, oh, I'm not going in there. Are you uh, saints? Mm, mm, mm. You must, see, the Israelites had a slave mentality. That's why they said, let's go back to Egypt. So saints, you don't want to be so blind to what God is doing or want to do in your life. God is doing some great things. He's still God. He's still God. He's still able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think. It's time for us to move. It's time for us to get up. It's time for us to stir up some things in our environment. You might need to let go some people. Lord Jesus, maybe you're around the wrong company. Maybe you're hanging out in the wrong places. Maybe you're sitting in a seat of doubt. I'm here to tell you today, God is still moving and God is trying to get his people. I God, God is calling, God is calling you, my sister. God is calling you, my brother. I, I, I told you on yesterday, there's a high calling on your life. There's a high, not just a calling, there's a high calling on your life. You're able, you're that one that is able to make a difference in the kingdom. I'm not just talking about in your community. I'm not just talking about in your church. I'm talking about in the kingdom of God. Jesus never talked much about himself as much as he talked about the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. And we talk so much about Jesus, but not enough about the kingdom. Lord Jesus. Man, the keys to the kingdom. Wondering why folk are not getting saved. Wondering why folk are not coming. Because you're talking about Jesus when you're not talking about the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things will be added unto you. See, and, and, and whew, what is God calling you to do? What is God calling you to do? Man, some of you might be taking care of a parent. <laughs> you know, I mean, the parent took care of you, raising you. And now it's time for you to give back. Some of you might be, you know, parents and raising your children, this and that and that and this, trying to keep a job. And I mean, there's so much going on in our lives today. But I'm here to tell you, if you have Jesus in your life, life is manageable. He will teach you with the help of the Holy Spirit. He will help you get to that place where you're going to be able to say, man, I'm so glad I got Jesus. I can't even imagine what my life would be, be like without him. And that's it. Have you given place to doubt? double-mindedness, uh, maybe you just don't care about what's going on. Maybe you settle for whatever happens, it's okay. That's not what this is about, saints. Uh-uh, when I was out there in the world before I came to Jesus, I was living like that. I'm not supposed to live like that now as a man, woman of God. I got to be someone of principle. The Bible says lift up a standard. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'm here to lift up a standard because I know who I am and whose I am. See, and when you fail to do what God is directing you to do, that means you will also fail to become the person God wants you to be or the person God wants you to become. Because all of us are still becoming. You haven't yet arrived. You know, matter of fact, Paul says that I have not yet apprehended on how to live this life. And he said that at an old age, after starting churches, been in prison, shipwrecked. I mean, he got one heck of a testimony. I'm here to tell you now. And you know something? Every one of you viewing this message, every one of you on the prayer line this morning, you have one heck of a testimony. You can talk about some stuff. And I'm here to tell you, I, I, I'm glad I don't have to live your story. And you better be glad you didn't have to live mine. You might not have survived if you had to go through what I went through. And I might not have survived if, I'm, if I had to go through some of what you've gone through. See, but God says he will never give you more than what you can bear. And he will always lead you a way of escape. You know your way of escape? My God, my God. Your way of escape is in Jesus. That's it, saints. Your way of escape is in Jesus. See, and, and, and we have to keep on doing what you have to keep on doing what you're doing in order to fulfill your purpose. 
Are you hearing me? You are here on purpose to fulfill a purpose. And God's purpose and will for your life is always better, always more important than what you might want to do. Why? Because I want to be able to step into my destiny. All of us, as we travel down this highway called life, believe it or not, you're moving towards your destiny. Everyone, your legacy. What will your legacy say about you? What will yours, what will the end of your life say about you? And one thing I want to, I want my life to say is I knew this man named Jesus. And when I stand before him, I want to hear him say, this is my servant and whom I'm well pleased. I don't have to hear title, titles. I don't have to hear bishop or pastor, evangelist, uh, minister. I need to hear all that stuff. Uh, this is my servant. I'm, I'm a servant. I'm a servant. Thank you, Jesus. Matter of fact, if not a servant, call me student. I'm a student. If I'm a disciple, I'm a student. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a student of this word. I'm a Berean. I want to study to show myself, approve a workman, not ashamed unto God. Thank you, Jesus. Matter of fact, the Bible says in Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rise up against you in judgment shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Dude, man, I mean, man, see, 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 God, God's got a very special place for you. See, but you have to focus on you have to focus on and think about the good things that God has promised, the good things that God has done, the good things that God is presently doing in your life. And you got to focus more on that than on the things that is coming at you to stop you, to discourage you. You are amazing. I mean, you are amazing. I, I mean, look at all of what you've been through and you still here. Look at how many people lost their lives in that pandemic. And I know some of you have been on that sick bed of affliction, the COVID, this to that, to that, to this, the bullets and the guns and the this and the that, to that, to that. I mean, man, I mean, when you get up out your bed and you leave your house, it's a blessing when you can return back to your home. Unscathed, unscarred, unmarred, with a praise and a song on your lips. And now, oh God, I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Saints, you have to keep moving. And when I say keep moving, I'm talking about moving forward, Lord Jesus. Well, some of us have gotten in our little wheelies and we've taken ourselves back into yesterday, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press, thank you, Jesus. You've got to press through doubt, press through fear, press through worry, press through the naysayers. That's right, everybody don't want you to succeed. They like you when you was in that dysfunction. They like you when you was on them drugs. They like you when you was, you know, when you was acting crazy. And, and now they might think you're acting crazy because you're talking about Jesus. Why? Because the world don't want to receive him, but you received him in your heart. And because I have him in my heart, I'm not going back there no more. I've made up my mind. Thank you, Jesus. Me and my Jesus, the whole world against me. I can truly say I am more than a conqueror. Why? Because greater is he that is in me. I'm going to keep moving forward. Whew. So sometimes we need to just ask ourselves, am I going in the right direction? Is my life going in the right direction? You got to be honest with yourself about yourself now. If you still hanging out at the club and, the, and, the, and, and, and you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You still hanging out with Sister Butterbean and Slick Willie? Crazy Eddie, are you hearing me? See, you still doing those things that you used to do? You know, then, you know, you haven't yet embraced or totally embraced your salvation. You haven't totally embraced this word of God. And we must be, the Bible says, those of us who are led by the spirit are sons and daughters of God. Thank you, G. So you have to be led by the spirit. So, 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 so another question, could you be doing more with your life than what you're doing right now? What are you waiting for? Could you be doing more with your life than what you're doing right now? Matter of fact, let me ask you another question. Let me ask you another question. What are you doing with the gift that God has blessed you with? What are you doing with the gift? Now, one or two of you might say, 
I don't know what my gift is. Maybe it's because you're not spending enough time with God. Maybe you're not reading his word. Maybe you're outside of the church. See, if you're outside of the church and the fellowship, the, hey, the Bible says don't forsake the assembly. Don't forsake the fellowship. I'm here to tell you now, you, you, you got to get on board. Uh, me and my Jesus and the whole world against me. Oh, my God, I know I'm going to win. Why? Because I've never read in scripture where God lost a fight. Are you hearing me? When the devil tried to take over heaven, he sent, he didn't even have to do it himself. He sent Michael, the archangel Michael, and said, hey, get, 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 get this dude out of here. Uh, get him out of here. I don't know what, what, what didn't come over him. He think he bigger, better than me. Hey, look here, place no other God before him. Are you hearing me? See, and, and I want you to know today that God, oh my God, mm, 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 he is still sitting high looking low. I'm here to tell you today, God's got to be on the throne of your heart. I'm talking about Jesus, see? I'm here to tell you now, when he's on the throne of your heart, look here, two spiritual keys to growth. Here's two spiritual keys to growth. Number one is you have to have faith in God. You have to have faith in God. Mark 11, 22, have faith in God. That second thing is this, you have to learn those life lessons that will enable you to grow and to keep moving forward to keep moving forward. I want to keep moving forward. That's why I don't understand how the Israelites was able to come to the edge of the promised land and what would make them think that God wouldn't bring them the rest of the way. Saints, you are about to step into your change. If you can believe it, you can receive it. See, you've got to be able to, to know that God is still working behind the scenes in your life. You've got to be able to see in the spirit the things that are taking place, the things that are manifesting in the natural. Thank you, Jesus. I've learned to walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, my God, my God. It's not about your feelings, my sister. It's not about your feelings, my brother. It's about knowing, oh, my God, that this thing that God has put in you. I'm talking about his spirit, the Holy Spirit who is in you. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Can't you feel it? My God, my God. See, you've been going around that mountain long enough. Uh, it's time It's time to do something new now. It's time to change. It, it, look here, if you find yourself in a cul-de-sac at a dead end, I'm here to tell you today you can back up. You can make a turnabout, a turnaround, repent. You need to come to the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, uh, I'm sorry. Help me now to do what I need to do because I recognize and realize I'm not able to save myself, help myself, or bring myself to a place of change. But I'm thanking you for being patient with me. See, God has been patient with all of us. Thank you, Jesus. See, look here. Those lessons that those lessons that you you know the, the lessons that you don't learn. Guess what? You're gonna sub. You're gonna you're gonna repeat those things again. Those things that you don't receive are not able to interpret or understand, most likely you're going to repeat those same lessons over and over and over again. And some of us are still waiting. Some of us are still sitting. Some of us is wondering when God going to show up, when God going to do. Well, I'm here to tell you, God already showed up and he's already doing. And I'm here to tell you, matter of fact, the Bible says in, 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 in Proverbs 4 and 5, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get an understanding. Lord Jesus, with all of thy getting, get an understanding. Man, Whew. look here, saints. All of us are different places in our walk with God. You know, and you have to be able to see, know, and understand that God has a way of communicating his word to each and every one of us. And we have to come to that place where we recognize and realize that what God has called us to is bigger than what we might want for ourselves. Look what he says. Look what he says in the eighth verse now. Proverbs 4 and 8 says, exalt her. We're talking about wisdom and she will promote you. Some of you are looking to be promoted. You want to be promoted, but you're not exercising wisdom. 
You want the you want the fame, you want the glory, you you want the acknowledgement, but you're not exercising wisdom. You have to exercise wisdom. Why? Because wisdom, she will bring you honor when you embrace her. Oh my God. In other words, you got to treat wisdom like a woman. Lord Jesus. I'm not just talking about any woman. I'm talking about a good woman. I'm talking about a virtuous woman. I thank God for the virtuous women that were in my life. Thank God, my God, my God. Why? Because those, I'm talking about mama, starting with mama now. Mama was a virtuous woman. I'm thanking God. And I recognize and realize now all of us didn't start off virtuous. But when we came to this man named Jesus uh, and got that word of God in our hearts, there's something about that word of God that was able to pick us up and turn us around, plant a seed of faith and hope. Uh, my hope is in nothing else other than the fact that I know I'm in the hands of the one who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what I can ask or think. Thank you, Jesus. God loves you, saints. God loves you. So let go. Let go of fear. Let go. You ain't got to be afraid of no giants. Hey, David was able to bring the giant down. Now he picked up five stones, five smooth stones, but only took one stone to slay that giant. And if you have a Goliath in your life, I'm here to tell you, all you got to do is sling that slingshot and put that, are you hearing me? Why? Have faith in God. You are well able, you are well able to do what you need to do in order to bring about that change in your life. Stop sitting and waiting and hoping. Hey, looking unto Jesus, all you got to do is keep talking to the one who's waiting to talk to you. He's waiting. He's an ever-present help. There's times you might call me up and you'll get my answer machine because I'm not home. See, but I'm talking about a God who's always present. I'm talking about a God who, are you hearing me today? There's not an hour, day or night that he's not available to take your call and to answer or to respond to your request. Now, the Bible says he's looking for hope. Those of us who are true worshipers, those of us who will come to him in spirit and come to him in truth. Now, in other words, I'm not going to come, you know, with the tears and all that. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, no, I'm coming in faith because I know that my God can move. And hey, your tears won't move God. It's your heart that's going to move God. Hide the word in your heart so you don't sin against God. Man, you know, uh, you think about them people out there on them drugs, man. They'll come to you, boy, with tears. Why? Because all they want is that money so they can get another hit. So they can get another whatever. So they can get another drink. So they can go gamble a little bit more. So they can have, you know, they want what you have. So they'll bring the tears. They will bring this. They will bring that. And you know why? Because they want to try to move your emotions. They want to try to break you down so you can give to them. And God says, don't come to him like that because he knows your heart. He's reading your heart. He knows behind those tears, you're not real. He knows behind those tears, you trying to, you know, the Bible says, uh, uh, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man or woman sow, that shall they also reap. What you're reaping today is what you sowed yesterday. What you're gonna reap tomorrow is what you sow today. Sow to the spirit and you will live. Are you hearing me? Sow to the spirit. So to the spirit, stop waiting, stop sitting. There's a time to sit, but when you sit, I'm sitting before Jesus and I'm getting built up on the inside. So when it's time to get busy, I got a direction. I have a goal. I have a dream. I have a purpose. I'm going to pursue those things that will bring change in my life, in my family, in my job, in my ministry. Are you hearing me? You are a change maker. You were sent here to be a wise master builder. A, you're not an apprentice, a wise master builder. But it's going to take wisdom. It's going to take the principles that's based on this word of God. And, and the beautiful thing is Jeremiah 3.15 says it right here. It says it right here. I will give you pastors after my own heart. God says it right there. He will give you pastors after his own heart who will feed you knowledge and understanding. When you can apply the knowledge and understanding, we're talking about wisdom. 
this is why you need to be in the church. <laughs> I know people who say, hey, you know, I'm a Christian, but they don't go to church. I, I, I love the Lord and the Lord told me and the Lord. Saints, we have to be actively involved in this and recognize and realize that Jesus is the way. He's the truth and he's the light or the life. He's the giver of life, giver of life. Matter of fact, Jesus says he's the door. He's the door. He didn't, you know, like I said earlier, seek ye first the kingdom of God. He's the door to the kingdom. Nobody can come to the Father but by way of Jesus. This is why I told you earlier, he didn't expound upon himself. He didn't say, come to me. He says, he says he's the door that leads to life. We have to be able to, let's just say, to get to that place in our lives where we recognize and realize. There is so much more to life than what we might be living. And if you have made a decision to wait, you know, and I know scripture says, he who waits upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings like an eagle. They shall warn and not get weary. They shall walk in that thing. There's a season for waiting and there's a season for doing. And I'm here to tell you, my brother, my sister, you right now are in the season for doing. God says, you have waited long enough. What are you waiting for? It's time to enter into the promised land, that land of milk and honey. I, he done brought you over the desert. He done brought you through many trials and the tests. And he says, it's time now to step into your change. What are you waiting for? Mm, 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 mm. Can't make it no plainer than that now. Oh, praise God. 